So I'm writing a book with Shell Israel called The Age of Context, and I'm really in the Google Glass. So I'm, I'm, you know, Rackspace is sponsoring a contest at TechCrunch Disrupt where we're giving away $10,000 to a Google Glass developer. And I'm getting around and really trying to think, what is the future? So this is a little bit further out, maybe a year, year and a half before we can do some of the things we're seeing. But I wanted to get them on the record now so we could start uh, paying attention. Anyways, uh, I'm going to see Kitch Me, uh, which is a coupons.com app, and it'll help you uh, make things at home and go grocery shopping. We're going to talk about the future of grocery shopping and recipes right now. Who are you? Hi, Robert. Uh, my name is Gene Reddick. I'm a software architect at coupons.com. Um, I'm a software developer. I've been building apps and doing startups for since 1995, actually. I was in Vietnam. And when Netscape went public, me and some uh, friends who were there just thought, oh my gosh, something as huge is happening. We had no idea what the internet was. But we started an internet company in Vietnam, which at the time had about a single 64 kilobit per second connection to the entire country. Wow. <laughs> and so I came back to the United States. I joined a startup originally on the business side. And after the first bubble broke, that startup was acquired by Excite. Um, and all my software developer friends either had made so much money they never needed to work again, or they had lost so much money that they were just crushed, shambling wrecks of themselves. And so I thought, you know, I'm pretty technical. I had actually coded a bit when I was young. And so I started doing some development work. And I just, I loved it. And I just haven't stopped. It was, you know, over a decade ago. And I've been just coding ever since. Yeah. And well, I, well, coupons I've, I've been, I did a show out there at the headquarters. And we've seen what that is. But cover, cover what coupons.com is. And then we'll talk about okay. me. So coupons.com is the largest provider of digital coupons. Oh, I think that's the right term right now. Um, we have printable coupons, we have um, coupons that you can add to your card. It's a quite a big site, um, lots and lots of visitors, lots of usage, and still growing. Yeah, who, who knew? People are still in the coupons, right? <laughs> oh, amazing. <laughs> I used to work in retail and people would bring in coupons yeah. all the time. Hey, can I get $5 off this Nikon lens yeah. or something like that? Yeah. And, and I, of course, at grocery stores, you'd see people with stacks of them going through and going, okay, here's some for the cookies, and here's some for yeah. this, and here's yeah. some for that. Um, so what, what is Kitch Me, before we start talking okay. about Google Glass and g get caught into the okay. future? <laughs> so Kitch Me is a recipe and grocery saving site. We provide some of our own recipes as well as some curated recipes from around the web. We bring those together and then we combine them with grocery savings, both coupons in some cases, and also weekly grocery specials. And we combine that to try to find kind of both recipes that would appeal to you based on your location, um, your favorite stores, as well as any dietary requirements you have. And then we provide that and we think what we think is a very pleasing you know, HTML5 responsive next generation web interface. It's, it's an interesting space you're in because it's, uh, it's really, if you, if you start studying me and coupons.com is studying what coupons I, right. I download and use, right? Um, you can really start getting an idea of who I am and what else you can offer me. Right. You know, if you know I drink whiskey, uh, that gives you a, a, a certain opening into what else to suggest to me, right? Yep, definitely. Um, if you know I uh, you know, am a vegan, well, that closes off. You, right. You're not going to offer me any meat stuff, right? right? right. Well, we hope not. <laughs> well, hopefully. Yeah, we try not to. Anyway. And this world that we're starting to head into with this Google Glass is, is this contextual world where right. it starts serving you. Starts, in fact, the code name for this was Wingman. It's an assistant right. that sits on your face and right. sort of tells you, hey, don't eat that. Or, right. <laughs> you know, or right. go over here and right. you'll have a great time. Right. You know? Yeah, yeah. Are, what are you thinking about it, and what kinds of apps are you building so far for serving in the kitchen and at the grocery okay. store? Well, so what I built, so you know, I got Glass, I signed up at I.O. a year and a half ago. Okay. I got it a couple months back, right? And we kind of started talking about it and said, you know, well, actually, you know, one of the things that everybody's been asking for is a recipe application. We've got a recipe site, so it seemed like kind of a natural fit. And so essentially, I just started building, right? It's a little bit difficult because I've got one pair of Google Glass, and so I'd occasionally trade off with another developer, but we just kind of got started. And one of the things that we found with it was that 
simplicity was key, right? I probably pulled out 75% of what I wrote just because the interface was kind of fairly, we know, should, really had to simplify it. We, we should cover what, Google, okay. most of our okay. listeners probably know right. what Google Glass right. is, but my brother just okay. put a sign on his bar right. that says Google Glass, welcome here. <laughs> and people are like, what is a Google Glass, right? <laughs> and so there's a lot of people out there who really don't know what this right. thing, first of all, is it shipping? Um, it is not shipping yet, so Google released it to some developers, um, and then some other people who basically entered a Twitter contest, various celebrities, and obviously people inside Google. Um, I think you know you obviously have some opinions about when it's going to ship. I think by next May. Right. If it's not out by next May, it really will hurt Google because a lot of it's uh, a lot of our belief of what Google is going to be is based on this and self-driving cars and, right. and contextual stuff like Google Now. Right. And if they can't ship this in a timely fashion, then they're going to get slammed right. quite heavily. And right. they're going to open up space for competitors because right. there's going to be an Apple iWatch yeah. and all sorts of, yeah. hell, I'm wearing a sleep sensor that's watching right. me right now, yeah. right? So um, anyways, and we don't know yet what it's going to cost. I'm assuming it's going to be less than $500. Yeah. We paid more, which is brilliant. I think Larry Page yeah. and Sergey are the most, <laughs> Because we're paying to do their R and D exactly, exactly. and their PR, we're yeah, explaining exactly. this thing to the world. <laughs> we were happy about it. We were excited. I was like, I was so excited to get Google Glass. I was like, oh, look. we went down to Google to pick it up. My wife was like, I've got to come with you. It's like, it was, it's exciting. It's genuinely exciting. Yeah. And I paid for the privilege. And what is what is it that that we see? Because I know what I'll, right. uh, but right. but I like to explain what Google Glass is to a normal person. So. Essentially, you know, it's got a multiple sensors. Basically, every sensor that you have on your phone is in here. But the primary sort of user interface is a visual display. So basically, I'm looking at kind of a computer screen up and above my field of view a little bit. It's not augmented reality. I'm not you know, overlaying your face and you know, putting up Cheryl Teagues or something. It's just it's a screen up here. It's fairly small, so you don't have a lot of room. Um, and then you interact with it either through voice or by tapping the side. So this is essentially a kind of a touchpad that you can swipe down, various gestures, tap, et cetera. And, and there's a speaker in here, right. and there's a microphone. And a microphone. It, there's two sensors that, um, that your cell phone doesn't have, or, right. or one sensor your cell phone has, but it doesn't, it's not useful, right. in that it knows which way I'm aimed. Right. And in fact, you turn it on by looking up. Right. Right? right, and it, there's an eye sensor that hasn't yet really been turned on, right. but it's watching. It's a 16 by 16 infrared eye sensor right. that's watching our pupil, right. and can do stuff with that. Right. And, and which, that's of course the blink hack that the guy did, where you can just blink and take a picture, which yeah. is very nice. Yeah. Well, we're we're waiting. Larry Page is very quiet about that sensor. I, I asked him at Google I/O, "What does this thing do?" And he's like, "I didn't like you in the shower." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there was some article about that. They were saying like, "Oh, Larry Page scolded Robert School. Well, he was being funny. I thought. Yeah. I mean, you know, that was, that was a great picture, by the way. That's Thank awesome. you. <laughs> so we're using this in the in the future. We're right. using this in the in the kitchen. Right. We're making Thanksgiving dinner. Right. What? kinds of things are you hoping that we can do and what kinds of things are you already able to do with your app? So the simplest thing you can do now, which is what I tried to build, was just what's the, just the, the core of what it is you're trying to do in the kitchen, which is you have a recipe, you want to be able to see the list of ingredients, and you want to see the directions. The one thing we added to that was the ability to have the directions read to you. So very simple, very straightforward. In the future, you can imagine a lot of different things. Right? You could imagine timers that alert you when a step is done, you could have hangouts where you could be cooking in conjunction with a professional chef, for example. Um, you could have all sorts of, vid, you know, kind of Google goggles like video recognition of individual items that could give you feedback on calorie counts, yeah. um, cooking suggestions, etc. Yeah, I saw. It, it, I was just at a hackathon, a Google Glass hackathon yesterday, where, which had 50 people. And one of the teams uh, already had a scanner where you hold up a, a thing of milk and put right. the QR code in your, right. and it would tell it, you know, milk. Right. And then it could also look out on the internet, which right. probably makes coupons.com yes. very happy because yes. I'm looking at a box of cookies and coupons.com could say, hey, we have a coupon exactly. for that or we have a coupon for another brand yep. that's similar, right. but you can save 50 cents right. on that other brand and get you to change your brand preference, right? right? And the fact that it actually built some kind of simple kind of coupon and weekly special stuff into this because of Google's no advertising product policy I was a little bit nervous and so I kind of I wanted to get more familiar with it and then kind of go back to them and say is this advertising or not right I mean, is yeah. coupon advertising is it 
useful contextual information. I hope that Google is straightforward with that advertising is something that shoves at you. Right. But if I'm asking for, hey, I have a box of cookies, can right. you save me money? And I pull right. the advertising right. to me, I don't think that's I don't think that's advertising. Right. I think that's promotion right. or something else. But I don't think that's uh, straight on advertising because it's not interruptive. It's not in front of me. Right. It's it, if it serves my intent, right. I think that that actually rocks. Right. And I, I hope Google Glass uh, yeah. and that's, has that affordance. Yeah, I would certainly hope so as well. And I think that's we're going to go back to them and say, you know, is this okay? Yeah. So tell me about the SDK. Today the SDK is really rudimentary. It, right. it lets you. It's called the Ribbon SDK, right? Mirror API. The Mirror API, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep getting messed up with, uh, <laughs> with the Microsoft Office. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it's a ribbon of it's cards, ribbon. Yeah, exactly. right? Exactly. And uh, um, the Mirror API, sorry. Um, so the Mirror API only lets you do these basic cards that have some HTML uh, right. displays. So like, like putting a tweet on a card is, right. is really great. Right. And put it, probably putting a little coupon on a card is great. Yes or putting a list of ingredients, as long as it's not too long. Okay. Although you can sort of use this to scan up and down a longer list, right? You could potentially, though, I haven't really seen that exposed in the Mirror API, right? Okay. Google has that in their applications where you essentially have a scrollable list, Yeah. Um, but I haven't seen anything in the Mirror API that would support that, though you could probably do it by using the, you know, basically hacking the, the device itself or in the upcoming GDK, right? Their Glass developer kit that they're in development. Okay, tell me about that Glass okay. Developer Kit and how is that different from the Mirror a a a API? Okay, so the Mirror API is kind of fairly simple. You're essentially, you're coding stuff and you're doing JSON, right, which is a coding format. Basically, you're just pushing text from your application over the web to Google and Google takes that JSON and converts it into a running application, right? So what you can do with that, again, as you said, it's fairly simple, you're pushing HTML, you can put in some commands, but to get to the commands, you have to tap, swipe, et cetera, in order to do that. The GDK, which is sort of like their software development kit, is very similar to what they have on Android, apparently. Like no one's seen it yet, of course. And in that, you would be able to use Java, and you would actually code. You'd have much more direct control of the sensor. You'd be able to do much more sophisticated applications. So again, not out yet, supposedly soon. And that's really kind of the big game changer that everybody's waiting for. Because that'll really tell you how much you can really do with this. Now, uh, when I was at the uh, uh, Glass Hackathon, several people said you had to sideload the really hot apps. What does that mean? Is that the GDK or is that even going further? It's even further. So uh, as I mentioned, basically somebody built a Blink application that was taking advantage of the internal camera. And to do that, essentially, you have to root the device. You basically, you break into it and you basically load your own software directly onto the device and either overlay that on top of the operating system that's there or potentially even replace the operating system as I know some people have done. Uh, so in the future the GDK will make that unnecessary unless you really want to just... And Glass it. underneath is running uh, Android 4.04, right? right? That's my understanding. Yeah. So we covered all the okay. technical okay. stuff. So can we, can we do things like uh, crossing geofences, will it know? Like if I cross the geofence of my Safeway parking lot, right. so I walk onto this or I drive on the Safeway's yeah. parking lot, could I do something with this? Yes, in fact, I was, I had planned to actually try to build something to show you specifically because you had wrote an article a while back about geofencing that I really, really liked, um, where you're just talking about all the different things that you'd like to see in the future with kind of geographic related targeting and data. Um, anyway, so one of the things you could certainly do and that I could actually build today is. Right. The Glass app has a GPS in it, so it knows where you're located. You could essentially push that information back to us. We could look at a list of stores in your, lo your area, say, know what you're closest to, and we could, for example, show you a list of specials or coupons associated with that store. You could say, you know, I want to buy something with salmon. What's the nearest store with a special on salmon? And we could push that information to Glass, and you could use it that way. That's interesting. So you can see a whole range of things that people could do with geofences and where you are. Yeah. And by the way, that's contextual because if you're on the Safeway parking lot, you know you're right next to a grocery store. Exactly. If you're at the Starbucks parking lot, it's a completely different set of things yeah. that you could show to me, yeah. right? Yeah. You and might say, pick up some coffee for your party tomorrow. Right. Right? right. And the APIs, obviously, are good enough with the location sensors that you know, you know not just where you are, but how close you are to everything. Yeah. Right. So we can know that you know if you're a mile away, 
you're not there, right? It's like it's just not relevant. But of course, we also probably know what you're in. Are you in a car? Are you in a bike? Are you on foot? And so we can actually have more even relevant information based upon your mode of transportation. If you're in a car, a mile away is probably fine. Yeah. The, um, and we should take a look at what yeah. you've done, but I, I want to set some of the groundwork so that yeah. we know what's possible. Because a lot of this is dreaming. Yeah. It, you know, first of all, nobody's going to be, it, normal people aren't going to be able to buy this until April or May, right? Um, so early next year, right. or six months from now, eight months right. from now, right? Uh, so we're dreaming about eight months from now, right. before people can even get their first pair, right? right? And right. then they're going to have to figure out what it does, right. and they're going to have to look at apps like right. PitchMe or coupons.com. Right. Um, so we, we know we can do GPS in the, in the parking lot, because right. that's pretty accurate. Right. What about in the kitchen? Can you tell that I'm in my kitchen? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I could easily see... So you know, Google has goggles, and there's plenty of other sort of image recognition, recognition applications out there. So you could easily see, just through video, basically picking up still images and seeing a refrigerator and a stove, and basically saying, pulling those back into the application, and, and the application saying, I know where you are based upon the appliances that you're around, right? I know yeah. what a bathroom looks like, I know what a kitchen looks like, I know what a bedroom looks like, right? So you probably could, yeah. It's like, you know, maybe not by, through the GPS sensors, but just through, you know, just through the camera. There's some ways that I, I think we can sort of hack it. We could put a barcode on our, uh, on our refrigerator yeah. and you look at that barcode and it knows yeah. you're right in front of the yeah. refrigerator. That's sort of dorky, right. right? We could also put some Bluetooth radios around. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. If you have a little emitter, I have one on my keychain, in uh -huh. fact. Uh -huh. um, yeah, um, so this uh, Bluetooth thing is emitting right. my Bluetooth right. identifier into right. the air, right, every right. few seconds. Well, and if you have three of these, right. then you, and you know where these are, right. then you can know where the glass you is. Know, that's right. a, if you've seen Tile at all, yeah. right, that'd be a great application for something like Tile. Just slap that to the side of your refrigerator. It's putting a, some kind of RFID signal out. You know, and, there I am. And then we can just talk to Glass if we have access to the voice. We could just right. say, okay, Glass, I'm in my kitchen. Yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah, that's easy. And then it could turn on all these kitchen apps, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, it could turn on KitchMe, yeah. right? Yeah. So let's say that okay. happens. Okay. So what now? What, what what's KitchMe gonna do? What and let's okay. let's see maybe what it could look like, you know, okay. and what it looks like today. Okay. Should we do? It's a prototype, right? Yeah. Um, okay. Although so you can download if you have Glass, you can download KitchMe right it, now and it put it on yeah. on your Glass. I think one thing that's different from this to a lot of the other apps that have been developed, a lot of the applications rightly are apps by developers for developers. And so as a result, a lot of them are kind of really kind of pushing the boundaries, seeing what's possible. Yeah. We actually built something that is potentially useful today. I think it actually is, but you know, take a look. And my battery is already low on okay. my glass. So right. we might need a power cord here soon. All right. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so this is KitchMe, right? As you can see, it's a list of recipes. Um, I'm not logged in presently, but you know, very straightforward. Right, recipe information, ingredients, directions, and down here we have various deals that are related to this, right? So here are some specials at Kroger's and Save a Lot for chicken breast. Right? Yeah. Kind of fairly straightforward. So in this case, I'm going to just go to our Google Glass page, maybe. If I click the right button. Okay. So just usual information about what it is. I can click this button. It's not going out. It's authenticating to Google. Hopefully, oh, good lord. I, you don't have it loaded already. I actually, I do. So we'll ignore yeah, this for a second. Get <laughs> um, Play Julia Child since you're doing the cooking app and say, show us, show us what it looks like coming out of the oven. <laughs> I got a Trojan on my machine that, was, that I had to basically turn on two-factor authentication, which yeah. is causing me grief. So, okay, so now um, if you come back here and let's turn on the screencast. So this is what we're seeing inside uh, your Google Glass. Yes. So you're, you're running out of battery. Yes. <laughs> like frequent occurrence. OK, so it's sent me a recipe search application. Very simple, just a card. You can see this here. If I tap into that, I'm going to I actually do the search earlier and make sure everything was working. I will search again. I will search for chicken. 
because that's what, you know, four chicken, we'll see how that goes. Um, and now it's sending off, it's going out over the web, hitting Google Glass, going back to Kitch Me, getting a list of search results. It's the same search functionality that we actually have on our application. So it's the same search results. In this case, I'm only sending, returning three results. And because you don't want to see that much information, um, it takes a few minutes, come back, or a minute or so. Yeah. Oh, boy. <laughs> so, so there's latencies in here that it should be uh, optimized when we actually ship this product. Yeah. You can probably put some common ones into the package that's yeah, on the glass Because so. uh, there is 16 gigs of RAM on yeah, here. Yeah, there's plenty of room. So possibly you could even put kind of all the search results on there or a subset of the search results for the most common searches. Yeah. But right now, as you said, basically it's going from glass to my phone, from my phone over your wireless network, out over the internet to Google, and then basically from Google to Kitchen and then, you know, round trip again. So all right. let's see. Okay, oh, there we go. So savory peach chicken, chicken cordon bleu, and so two so far. So now we can take a look at one of those. So I like the savory. Savory peach chicken. Okay, oh, there we go. Okay, so you can do some stuff here. You can pin it. That basically makes it so it will stay, so it doesn't get pushed down the timeline as you get more stuff coming in. Obviously, if you actually plan to cook something, you don't want to have to go searching through it for you know 100 tweets from your friends and emails. Um, you can also share it, so I can send it to basically you know, your email address, or I can push it to Google Plus, or any of the other uh, sharing things that you could do now, Facebook, Twitter, etc. So we've got a list of ingredients. Canola oil, skin this boneless chicken breast, boneless uh, double there, interesting. Salt, um, more ingredients, more ingredients. And then here we get to the various steps. So the one other thing you can do here is if I tap on this, I can actually have it read aloud. So you probably can't hear this, but it's you know speaking in kind of your usual, you know, computer generated voice, but actually reading you the results. Yeah. So now this is where I would love to see like uh, Charlie Ayers, who ran the Google Kitchen, and now runs his uh -huh. own restaurant. I'd love to have him give a talk right. right there and tell me how to make it and walk me through what it should look like right. when I'm making it. Because right. that's there's lots of little tips that don't yes. come across yeah. very well in text. Yeah. But if if you could train somebody with glass yeah. and and actually show yeah. you the hands, yeah. recording that would be basically a video of somebody professional doing that again, as you said, so you can see what. Well, you know, this is what it looks like when it's done. It's browned on this side. It's you know, a little undercooked on this side for future purposes. Um, and you could also imagine basically cooking this with friends, right? If I happen to be part of a cooking club, for example, or just randomly people around the web who are cooking the same dish, I might want to know what they're doing, right? So yeah. you can cook in the kitchen with your friends at the same time. That's a big deal on Thanksgiving because yeah. everybody's making a turkey dinner yeah. on Thanksgiving. Yeah. And some people are doing it, you know, right. once they are not. But I was tweeting with people all over the world that, you know, I'm making it this way. And people would give me tips like, hey, right. try this on your chicken right. or on your turkey. Right. Or are you making mashed potatoes? Yeah, right. try this in your mashed potatoes. Right. There's a lot of social behavior that can happen on Twitter and Facebook yeah. and elsewhere, right? Yeah. yeah. Particularly on, a, on Thanksgiving. On yes. other uh, meal times, it's harder. Yeah. But. Right. Cool. Anything else that it does right now? Um, at the moment, so you can actually yeah. push application because you can push recipes from KitchenMe to Glass as well. Yeah. So you don't have to just search for stuff. If you already have some favorite recipes that you've set up or a recipe that you found on the web, if you have Glass and you've signed up for the Glass app, you can just click. Then there's a button on each recipe, and that will actually push that recipe. Looks exactly the same. Recipe with a list of ingredients and a list of steps. As a developer, are you going to be able to talk to the cards? Because if you have 15 steps, I'd like to say, okay, I'm done with step one, next step, or right. something like that, or okay, glass, next step. So this is actually, I think, one of the most requested features that I've seen kind of on the boards and other places is that Google has started to do this for their own applications, but they haven't rolled out this particular feature to other developers. And it's, it's an obvious need, right? If you're cooking and your hands are covered with tomato paste, or you're a surgeon and you're doing surgery, or you're working on your car, you really don't want to be touching this, yeah. right? You want to be able to just say, you know, move next, move next, back, and be able to activate everything that way just through voice. An another completely different trend that's happening in, in grocery stores is delivery to home, it, which works if you live in like New York or San Francisco. Right. The grocery stores now are delivering to your house even small numbers of items with right. a small fee. Right. Um, I could see a world where I'm going to say, oh, I don't have any of that stuff in right. my house. Can you just deliver the whole package yeah. and have it, and right. I'll charge for it? Right. 
how close are we to having that for a lot a lot of the metropolitan areas? And is that something that Kitchme is thinking about? So, yes. Um, I don't know that it's necessarily glass specific, obviously, because yes. you could do it from the web as well or any mobile device. And I think some of it will depend a little bit on kind of how comprehensive kind of their lists are, that kind of what's available. But I would expect in you know San Francisco, Seattle, Los Angeles, kind of the major areas that, that you know certainly that Amazon and Google are looking at and the various other competitors. There's no reason you couldn't basically on the application itself just say, hey, you know I like this recipe, just ship me everything. Yeah. There's also a lot of places where you can buy meals on the internet and have them FedEx to your house. Yeah. Uh, you can get barbecue from Salt Lake Barbecue uh -huh. in right. uh, Austin. Right. You can get uh, lobster from right. uh, Boston right. uh, shipped to you. You can get sa salmon from right. Seattle or king crab right. shipped to you, right? And right. you can get Chicago pizza shipped to right. you, right? Yeah. Um, are you thinking of how to integrate maybe a bigger meal plan? Like if you're having 30 people over, maybe you want some lobster, maybe you want a steak dinner, and maybe you want something else, right. and have some fun story yeah. behind it. Right. So we actually have a concept of menus. So in addition, instead of just making a single dish, you can actually make multiple dishes. And there's really no reason that those multiple dishes shouldn't, couldn't be a something I'm making myself, something I'm ordering in for. So you really could have a combination of things. Because right? you know, a lot of times people don't want to make their own dessert. Yeah. Right? They're just going to serve ice cream or something else that's store bought. But from a menu perspective, right, you want to share with your friends what it is you plan to make for dinner for a larger occasion. You could actually say, you know what, here's I mean, I'm making chicken cordon bleu and I'm making, you know, uh, whatever, you know, green beans and then I'm basically ordering out for Hagen Dazs. Yeah. That's, I think, where the sensors are going to be better than a smartphone. If you have your fingers in meat and food, you don't want to touch anything. Yeah. Yeah. Your, your hands are all disgusting yeah. and you don't, you know, I, yeah. I, I've done that, right? <laughs> and, and, but here you could use the sensors to say, either talk to it and say, right. okay, show me back, go back to my turkey recipe because right. I need to check on my turkey. Right. Oh, oh, okay, that's going. Right. I, now take me back to my pie recipe, right. or do something with my head so it would right. flip the cards back right. to the pie. And that's what you're seeing with some applications that people have developed that are making use of the camera, where essentially just by waving your hand over the camera, you can basically go to the next page on the application itself. So with Glass, you shouldn't need to do that, but you could imagine basically if they don't give voice control, you know, just kind of this, that, down, back kind of motions. Wow. It's a fun, yeah. fun time to be a developer because there's so many new things, new ways of looking at the world coming, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. And just I think what surprised me about this was how fast it came, right? People have been talking about wearable technology and heads up displays you know, for 20 years. And just all of a sudden, it's here. It's yeah. here now. That's well, incredible. The cost, because of smartphones, the cost on sensors is coming way down. Yeah. The processors are getting smaller. They use less battery. Yeah. And it's, it's all of a sudden possible. Yeah. Well, that's cool. Okay. So uh, are you going to enter our TechCrunch uh, contest to see yeah. if you can be uh, the, app, the Google <laughs> Glass app developer yeah, of the year? Why not? I mean, you know, it's the Mirror <laughs> API, so it's going to be stiff competition with the real hardcore guys. But, you know, we'll, we'll give it a go. Yeah. We're uh, giving away $10,000 at TechCrunch Disrupt yeah. uh, here in September. So, uh, by the way, we're, we're going to have information up on that uh, uh, soon, so stay in touch. We'll post it underneath the uh, video and, and other places on okay. building 43 okay. com. Okay. Thanks okay. for coming out. Where do Thank I you. learn? Where do I get this app? What's the um, URL? www.kitchme.com. K I T C H N E dot com. Right. And go to the Google Glass page. Very cool. Thank okay. you so much for Thanks coming and talking about the future. My pleasure.